All right. Welcome back to the podcast. My friend, Chef Bruno, is joining me on the podcast from Pizza Bruno in Orlando, one of my favorite pizzerias. Actually, it's probably my favorite pizzeria in Orlando when I visit down there. So, Chef Bruno, thank you so much for joining me again. Thanks. Thanks. Good to good to be back. As We've been on, you've been on the podcast a few times, so it's always good to chat with you. And I'm always jealous when you come on the podcast because I am in shitty cold Boston and you're in nice sunny Orlando. Yeah, it's it's I mean, for February, it's exceptionally warm. Uh, I think it's going to supposed to get up to 90 at the tail end of this week. I might just delete this podcast right now. Oh, man. Uh, you should be doing this in person. Next time we'll do it in person in or in your in Pizza Bruno. Yeah, totally. So. I know you've been on the podcast before and we've talked about your background a little bit, but like give everybody an update. What's going on? I haven't talked to you since this whole, I don't think I've talked to you on the podcast since the whole lockdown of society for the last two years, but give everybody an update. Like what's been going on with you? What are you up to? Uh, all right. So I think the last time we did talk before the pandemic. Uh, so in that time frame, obviously we did a big switch to a lot more takeout. We actually yep. did a, a renovation and expansion of our existing space. We added a, a whole new uh, wood, uh, wood-fired Pavese oven uh, to handle uh, our takeout volume for pizzas, uh, a separate entrance just for takeout. It's all connected, but it's a separate entrance to alleviate the bottlenecking we used to have and make it a little bit more understandable of where you get your takeout. So we've been doing that. Uh, we struggled through a lack of labor. Then we are now dealing with plenty of employees, but a way higher pay rate. Uh, I was doing the math and our average line cook rate has gone up 30% or is it 30%? A uh, 30% since about a year ago. That's wow. our, av- our average cost. Now, is that because you're trying to attract people or that's just the going rate? That's kind of the going rate. And, you know, it's how do you get people to work, right. you know, for anything less than. And I, and I get it. I mean, I was a line cook forever. So, yeah. you know, I don't have a problem with it. I think uh, it's, it's okay and it's just the natural progression. I, I read somewhere it's... You know, it's it's kind of high time that food isn't, you know, a subsidized industry with cheap labor and you have to pay for what you get sort of thing. Um, So dealing with that, I've also found new uh, revenue streams and new ways to bring uh, business to Pizza Bruno and my other projects, which have been a lot of uh, classes, been teaching a lot of classes at a local um, kind of boutique, uh, but they have like a classroom space in the back and they have a beautiful outdoor space. So we've been actually this Saturday we did, I think it was Saturday, uh, we did two uh, pizza making classes. This was the second round of two. And then we have another two coming up in March and we have a whole sl- a slate of classes scheduled for the next, I think three or four months until it gets too hot, which is about June. Wow. I think we'll take a break from June excuse me, July and August, but we're going to mix it up. We did pizza making, we did pasta making. Um, we're going to do some cast iron cooking classes, some wood fired cooking classes. We're going to do uh, an uni specific class because a lot of people are buying unis and rock yeah. boxes and stuff for home use. So we're, we have a lot of stuff going on. I personally have a lot of stuff. Our catering company's killing it uh, that we have a wedding tonight for 60 people. It's, it's small, but you know, we, we stay busy and uh, I'm that close to opening pizza Bruno number two. Really? Where are you going to open it? Uh, I can't really say because, you know, the ink's not on paper. It's we're close to your original one or uh, Uh, in in Florida, obviously. It's in Florida. Yeah, it's in a it's in a different neighborhood. It's about if you were to drive on the wonderful uh, highways of Orlando, (laughs) it's it's about uh, I drive my kid to school there every day. So if you know me, you know exactly where I go. Uh, it's about 15 minutes north uh, west. Okay. So it's not far, but it's far enough to where we will capture a lot of ca- uh, guests that don't want to make the drive all the way to the Curry Ford location. And the neighborhood, I feel, is it is saturated with pizza restaurants. I will say that. But they are a little tired. <laughs> and the, the Italian food there, a little tired. So while somebody's going to say, no doubt, oh, do we really need another pizza place in this neighborhood? I'm going to say yes, because all of them are crap. What, so, what's that? Is it going to be similar to your one you have now? Yeah. So it's a little smaller. Um, this space we're looking at is 1,400 square foot inside and another about 400 outside in a small covered patio. The cool thing about this space, it will have a, a actual a hood like a kitchen 
we don't have that at Pizza Bruno. We only have the wood-fired oven, and we've only been able to uh, use induction burners and stuff for any, like, saute or any. But we yeah. really only do that one night a week, which is tonight. I go in tonight. I'm doing pasta night tonight, so I'll, I'll be the one cooking pasta. Uh, but at this location, we have a full hood which I'm super excited about and we'll be able to offer a full-time pasta program along with some other kind of chef driven items. I'm excited about that because we're, we're not to say we're limited at pizza Bruno, but we are known for things that we have to have. Right. And it's such a machine that I cannot really, it's hard to change the parts. It's moving. So um, it's going forward so fast. It just, you know, we change a dish here and there. I can't take off what we have. And we're currently kind of like maxed out on what we can do. So this is going to be cool because it's it's going to be limiting in certain ways. But I'm also excited because I get to have this other portion that I think is going to be very successful and, and a nice addition to what we already have. So and your pizza is your pizza is not New York style. It's not Neapolitan. It's like a combination. Of yeah. The two. Yeah. It's that, you know, popularized new Neapolitan style that, you know, started with, you could say, the Roberta's of the world and, yeah. you know, kind of. The Roberta's Poly G's, that whole Brooklyn, you know, new wood fired pizza thing. And, and you know, that's what we've done uh, from the start. And we've evolved and evolved and evolved to where we are now, which I think we're doing better pizza now than we've ever done. So. I love that. How did you get uh, like so these classes that you're doing? I think you shared it on your Instagram, like the, you mm -hmm. showed like kind of like behind the scenes a little bit. Um, chef, what is your Instagram handle, by the way? Uh, so pizza Bruno is official pizza Bruno. That's, yeah. that's the, that's the work. Instagram. That's the main business though, right? What, that is you, the business. Yeah. Yeah. My personal one's, uh, flying zucchini 71. That. That's, <laughs> that's a great name. I, I come from a circus family, the famous flying zucchinis. So are you serious? Or are you messing with me? No, I'm totally serious. <laughs> that's fantastic. How do you think a uh, Italian kid ended up in Florida? Came with the circus. Ah, there you go. Sarasota. Yeah. Not a bad place to be, though, I have to say. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I loved your I always I always like chuckled every time I saw your Instagram handle flying zucchini. It's free. Yeah. It's very memorable, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's but that's the family. Uh, that was the family act. That's even, great. Even cannonballs. So you shared behind the scenes of your cooking classes. How did you get started with that? Was that something that you've always wanted to do or was that like coronavirus thing kind of pushed you in that direction? Uh, no, actually, it was neither. Um, so my wife really enjoyed shopping at this uh boutique it's called house on lang it's a small boutique tucked behind um some businesses on mills 50 which is really popular trendy little area in orlando yeah and she saw they were doing classes for just random stuff and she's very into she handles my pr now so mm -hmm. I'll, I'll my, my wife leela she handles all my pr all she has handled the instagram now which i did for years years and years and years i hand it off to her she so she handles all that and all the the marketing and pr on that side and so she saw they were doing classes and she's like wow that'd be really cool you know if maybe you taught a class and come up with some ideas so i shot some ideas at her and and we picked some off the list and we did a like charcuterie board building class before thanksgiving as sort of like a quick holiday you know what are you going to bring the thanksgiving kind of thing right and so we started with that and it sold out immediately so that was like, okay, so there's interest. And then we did another in December for uh, tortellinis. So my family tradition for Christmas is tortellini and brodo, which is a very Northern kind of Italian thing. And so we did that and sold those out pretty quickly. And it was two sets of, I think, 14 people per class. And we do that in one day. And then January, we didn't do anything, I think. Like, they might, they just, every, yeah. the, the week's blur. And we were coming up with some ideas like, you know, Valentine's Day. I'm like, eh, I, I don't really look at it as like, oh, we're going to make a ton of money at the restaurant or it's a big deal. Uh, so we had this idea of like, well, let's do a pizza making class because I've done one at the shop before. It worked out OK. Yeah. And but so we're like, well, let's try that again and let's do it at this place. So we did. They sold out in 20 minutes to uh, two sets of classes, uh, 18 people per 18 uh people per class so it was a couple's thing so that's what we build it as is a couple's experience so we booked two classes and we booked another two and then we're going to do another two in march for overflow people love just, like taking classes about making pizza huh uh everything it's i didn't realize that it was such a a thing i i, 
I wouldn't go. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I'm around. Well, you're different. Right? Like we yeah, would do it at home. Yeah, yeah. I might go to a pizza expo uh, management class. Right. Right. <laughs> like, right. This is exciting, guys. You know, this is where where the real uh, meat and potatoes is, right? But no one wants to go to that. But if you're a banker or an accountant or a plumber and you want to learn how to make pizza at home because you see it all over the internet yeah. now, like yeah. you got to go learn from somebody. Yeah. So, and like I said, back to what people were doing during the pandemic, there a lot of people were baking bread and yeah. cooking at home more, more so than ever. So this is like attached to that natural progression people made to cooking more at home and wanting to kind of get deeper into stuff that they really didn't have time for before. Uh, so that was really successful. And we just, you know, we kill it. You know, we go out, we teach two classes, two hours per class with an hour break. And then we do another um, to our class. And it's really simple. We just bring out the wood fired oven. We have them, you know, stretch dough, we top it. Uh, we have my guys there helping through the whole process and they help them cook it and they eat their pizza that they make. And then we also do a fresh mozzarella demo and they do, we do fresh mozzarella, you know, pulled and then a tomato salad with like local tomatoes and this, uh, basil that's being grown for us right now with out of a local farm and yeah people were like wow you just ruined mozzarella for me i was like <laughs> you know when you have it fresh like warm mozzarella with like really good it people were just like whoa i didn't know it could be that good so it's all in all it was it's a really good experience and i mean fun for me because it's a little different uh as far as just getting out of the normal you know the restaurant routine and you know doing the catering thing or the restaurant thing it's just something different that while is you know related to the restaurant it's just a different revenue stream and i think that's important as a owner operator to to find that because yeah. you can only there's so much so much juice you could squeeze out of the lemon right and, and it's like know, Groundhog Day, right yeah. like every day is the same pretty much monday's monday oh, tuesday yeah. tuesday it's like yeah. a never-ending cycle of those days and you need uh -huh. to be stimulated as an owner to do something different i always like I, that's what burnt me out is because it was so much the same routine every day and after a while you're like oh my god someone kill me yeah i couldn't agree more and that's that's really you know the struggle is is how do you stay interested in something that is so routine and and let's face it man a lot of it is not fun like um, I, I <laughs> yeah. you know i'm i'm not not trying to be a, a debbie downer but you know owning and operating a business a restaurant is a bummer a lot of yeah. times just it's difficult you know not to say it's not rewarding because it is but it's also you know stressful and so time consuming and and it really is upsetting a lot of times you know when you have people and bills and you know all the stuff you know you forget why you do it you yeah. know like i really like the idea of the simplicity of you know being that line cook and, and, you know, just, I just have to worry about this and the, the pizza. And while it might seem like a lot, it's really so simple. Or even like a lot, you see a lot of people doing pizza pop-ups now with unis mm -hmm. or gosnis. Mm -hmm. And you're like, that's great because you just can go wherever you want, not go wherever you want, but like you could set it up when you want, yeah. wherever you want. And you're like, you just make pizza, you sell them and you're done. Yeah. There's oh man, there's a beauty in that simplicity and you really don't have all the stuff that comes along with it. And, you know, it you know it's but then again like would i go back to that no <laughs> you know like <laughs> yeah. i wouldn't go back i because i did that. i started with a yeah. you know a food cart you know over a decade plus ago and uh, i've been in restaurants my whole life and I, that was my first foray into ownership was a, a singular thing which was just me and you know i've ran kitchens i've worked in kitchens my whole life and you know i finally progressed into you know from pop-ups and to a full-scale restaurant it's just a different ball game I like your restaurant too. Your restaurant is different. Like you, you know, you 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 put your personality into it when it comes to how the restaurant feels when you walk in. It's not, it's not what every pizzeria is like. It's very much you in like your style. Yeah, yeah. Well, didn't have any money. I just had stuff laying around. So <laughs> that's how that's how it ended up like that. You know, somebody was like, "Wow, I think somebody else." Uh, we had that same discussion. It was the Pizza Today podcast. We're like, oh, we're looking. We've never been there, but we're looking at interior and pictures of it. And it's very, it seems very unique and original. And it's like, well, how did we get there? And I said, well, I opened and I had no money, but I had a lot of stuff that I've collected over the years and just kind of added to the character and just stuff I like. So, as you can see, all the this is my home office. This is just stuff that I've had framed over the years. I had. My mom was a professional art framer for a long, long time. So I would just buy stuff yeah. and send it to her. And, 
you know, I would just pick up cool art that I liked. And so that's how that kind of came about and just piecing it together as we went. But it makes you feel cozy and like it makes you feel like some restaurants you go in and it's too, too organized and too like thought out versus like just making you feel like you're at your house kind of eating dinner and a good pizza. That's it makes you feel more comfortable. Yeah, no, I, I get it. You know, it's uh, that's that's the thing, right? It's like you have that cookie cutter look. Yeah. That very straightforward kind of predetermined thing which is great it's that's great that's good for people to operate in that sense um i did a uh, i just did a consultant consultancy project in aruba of all places in the really yeah i was there for two weeks this past damn talk about a nice place to do a consulting job yeah 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 it's i mean it if you have a chance go down it is really i've been awesome. twice to aruba oh you have yeah okay a lot of people i think there was a lot of people from boston there they were saying that at least there were some people there that i was like overhearing they were all from boston so yeah i've been twice popular. i haven't been in a long time but i've been twice it's a beautiful place oh it's awesome i just didn't know what to expect and i really enjoyed it but the, the clients I worked for, they they operate predominantly with franchises. They have a ton of franchises. And so this is their first independent. And they chose pizza. Uh, and it's surrounded by a lot of pizza places. So I was surprised they chose pizza. But they all really enjoy pizza. Uh, but it's funny because, you know, how they, they didn't really have a set box to work within. So there's a lot of decisions that have to be made that aren't made for them. So I was watching kind of this process happen. And it's interesting. You know, they came from this franchise model where it's set this is how right. it is day one and i'm there i'm like well we have to move this like this because this just doesn't work you know they're like, what? <laughs> like uh, it was it was fun but it's fun it's a it, it's a it was a good deal down there and i hope to go back soon so we'll see i was just talking on a podcast the other day about that and like there's two different models you can have if you want to open a pizzeria because a lot of people who listen to this podcast are like especially in the last couple of years are people who have started to make pizza at home and they're like all right you know maybe this is something i want to do for a living and there's i think there's two different categories there's do you really like making pizza and then you can do one style or do you just want to do it to make money yeah if you want, just want to do it to make money maybe the franchise model is more for you because everything's set up for you like mm -hmm. the systems the, the layout the backing the you know everything you need to run the business to just be profitable is just based on volume and it's set up but if you like making pizza that's probably not the way to go because you, your hands are really tied mm -hmm. yeah. yeah 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 totally totally uh and that's the thing right like why are you in this business yeah money or i mean you know you can make money independently for sure it's just a harder longer path i feel like to get there it's not and it's not guaranteed like there's no guarantee, especially nowadays, like 20 years ago when I was operating, you know, you could make a lot of money. It was way mm -hmm. easier because, you know, credit cards weren't as big a thing, you yep. know, it, it, just the expenses weren't as high. There wasn't as much competition. People, the Internet was a thing, but only if you were a nerd. Yeah. It wasn't like for the normal person. So, like, nobody really knew what was out there and mm -hmm. they didn't know what good quality stuff was. So it's way harder now to do it. I, I totally can picture that. Oh, man, I I have to say operating. um a restaurant in today's environment is so hard uh, for so many different reasons from like everything you said down to like you said the labor yeah you know the labor cost and the cost of goods and you have to navigate that and you know you have like for me i come from a chef fine dining background so i have to look at like i only want to buy the best stuff and i only do like i really strive to go that route but you know you have to tell somebody you're going to charge them $20 for a pizza. That's a 12 inch pizza. And they look at you like you have three heads and I go, well, you know, I guess you got, there's literally a do, uh, little Caesars a block away. So you can go get a hot and ready. I mean, <laughs> it's hard, know? right? Because those same people that don't want to pay $20 for that pizza want or are advocates for people to make a living wage in every job they have, which I'm fine with, mm -hmm. but the the other side the other side of that coin is if that's the case then everything we buy is going to be more expensive and you have to not complain about that yeah 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 well you know that that's kind of you know i was a little so i actually did a price raise like last was it last week or two weeks ago yeah i didn't do one through the entirety of COVID. i didn't raise any prices all the way till september of 21. so you just and, absorbed it all yeah absorbed everything and uh you know it was just 
it was what it was. I didn't think it was necessary and I kind of didn't, it wasn't on my mind. You know, yeah. I, I don't know why it just wasn't, it wasn't apparent at the time. And then 2021 September, we only did a couple dollars here and there, like a dollar here, a dollar there. Uh, then last two weeks ago, we did a, a, almost 20% across the board. Did people freak out or? No, we That's had good. a couple, we had a couple people say, oh, the prices were high. We had a couple people say, wow, I'm glad you did that. It's been, I can't believe you've been selling things so cheap for so really? long. Really? Yeah. Wow, I was that's like, great. Oh, okay. That makes you like, damn it. Why did I do it way earlier? Yeah, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not in that, you know, I'm not in that mindset. I, yeah. I rarely think about, you know, numbers and me are not my, you know, it's not my favorite thing. But, but the thing was too, we also did some comparable market research. So we looked at some places that I know for a fact don't use great ingredients. And I was doing some comparables. I'm like, dude, they're charging 12 bucks for their, you know, mixed green Italian salad. And I'm like, dude, we're charging nine and we use local organic greens, you know, like that are yeah. so much higher quality, same thing with our tomatoes. And, and I just was like, you know what we have to, because like I was saying earlier, our, our line cook average cost has gone up. Average is 30%. That's our across the board average. So we were at 12 a year ago and we're at 16 now. It's yeah, I mean it's crazy. Yeah, it, but you look at McDonald's. Even you go to McDonald's now. You go. I mean, not that I go there often, but mm -hmm. if you do go there and you like get two meals, it's like twenty bucks. Yeah. So yeah. nothing is cheap anymore. So you got to no. make sure that you could cover your costs, and and I think that's a more sustainable business over the long term. Yeah. Well, I couldn't get. You can't get people to work uh, for anything less, and I think that's fair too. Like just from my perspective as a line cook of the past, you know, I worked for you know, pennies for yeah. a lot of hours of my life. You Same know? with me. And when I first started making pizza, I worked at Pizzeria Regina. I'm calling them out. I worked at Pizzeria Regina here in Boston. I made like $4 and 50 cents an hour making pizza. Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, I think my, sorry, I'm just going to add a little light in here. It looks yeah. a little dark. I mean, it was a long ass time ago. They're not like that anymore. I'm an yeah. old man. So it was a long time ago, but I'm just saying like, that was my first job making pizza. It wasn't yeah. glamorous or anything. No, no. I think my first job on the counter, I was 13. It was, you know, five fifty an hour in Jersey. Yeah. I worked 75 hours a week. It was great. It was like, <laughs> it was awesome. I was yeah. like, this is the best thing ever. You know, I got a little tips, you know, here and there, yeah. but, but that was for years. I mean, my last line cook job, I was getting paid 12 bucks an hour and that was a big deal. And that was, uh, about 10 years ago. Yeah. So, so that's not that long ago. Really? It's not. So you got to think, I mean, leaps and bounds from, and I was, that was at a fine dining restaurant. Like I was responsible for a lot of stuff. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's just evolving with the times, you know. Yeah, for sure. So do you use, like, social media? I know you, we talked a little bit before we got on here about you getting into TikTok. Are you going to use those platforms to kind of talk about what makes you different so that way when people do come in, they're not asking about the prices, they know all about it? Yeah, so that was a good point. Um, what we did when I did do the price raise, you can see it's on my Instagram as just a, uh, just a, a photo collage kind of thing, like a, a gallery or whatever. So we... When I did the price raise, I announced it. I wasn't trying to hide the fact that we did raise prices. And I made a, a point to take a picture of like, hey, here's our, you know, DOP uh, wheel of parm that we break down and we put in our like garlic knot sauce. Like, you, you know, like it's not out of the bag. You know, this is what's going right. on your pizza. This is going on all your things that our pecorino our, our ricotta. We took a picture of all these things and incorporated that into the post as a sort of like and i actually took some snippets from some web some websites of local pizzerias comparable items and their prices like and just put it all in there so you could all see like hey i'm raising our prices to what is comparable right and this is what we're using so by all means like you, you want to tell me it's too expensive okay, so you're going to pay the same price and walk down the street and get something that's of a lesser quality. Like, that's fine with me too. But you got to pick who you want as your clientele too, right? Like that's, yeah. the, that's if you try to please everybody, it's going to mm. end up, you're going to end up being miserable. Yeah. So I'm going to call, I'm going to call out a little bit of a bit that I was dealing with with some clients was that they were trying to do a lot of that yeah. at the start. And I've said, you can't do that. You cannot listen to everybody and try to make adjustments all the time. You will never succeed and you'll always, always be chasing that, yeah. well, you know, that, 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 whatever that is. I don't know what that is. And I was guilty of it too at the start. Like, I yeah, me to too. Please everybody. But 
you know, you just can't. And, and honestly, it's it's just a wasted effort because you'll find your clientele. Yep. And they will be, you know, diehard fans. And you'll have people that just isn't for them. And that's cool, too. Like, I don't – I'm fine with that. Like, I like my places. And there's places that I don't eat at because I'm like, well, it's not that good. But, you know, you have your people that think it is. That's fine. But, yeah. like – but That's a made- '90s to 2000 mentality. You know where that mentality came from? It's because it was pre-internet, mm-hmm. and it was pre every business being able to deliver. It was back in the day, and I remember this very well because I grew up. This is the business that I grew up in. You would have a pizzeria, and the only places that delivered back in the day were pizzerias in Chinese food restaurants. Mm-hmm. So as a pizzeria, you'd be like, all right, we make pizza. Let's add subs because people are asking for subs. We can get it delivered. Let's add salads because they want to deliver it. Let's yeah. add side suit food because they're asking for it. Let's add calzones. Let's add this. Let's add that. And before you know it, you got this menu that has 400 items on it. And uh-huh. then what happens is Grubhub, Uber Eats, DoorDash introduces delivery to every restaurant. And you're stuck with all those menu items. Yep. And it's way harder now to do that than it was back then when nobody delivered it. You were mm-hmm. the only option. Well, yeah, and that and that idea of like well, we have to have everything. So when everybody anybody comes here, they have unlimited choice. Yeah. And I'm like, I am so adamantly against having choices, really. Like if I had <laughs> yeah, my yeah. choice, you wouldn't get a choice, really. Yeah, I agree. Like, hey, this is what we're doing. Be cool with it because it's gonna be good. Cause once you know, they start choose wanting to change and you know, it's just a, so many problems. So, I wonder yeah. if you could open that. Like, I've always wanted to try this, but I don't know. I w- what if you could open a pizzeria that, like, just sold cheese and pepperoni slices and that's it? Like, just cheese sure. and pepperoni pizza. And, like, make it the best you possibly can around, and that's all you do. I mean, yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> like, as, a, as a pizza maker, that's my dream, right? Like, not giving anybody <laughs> yeah. choices and just yeah. doing the, the way you want to do it. For our brief, uh, you know, period of time this past year, we did our, our slice uh, lunches. So we did whole pies yeah. and buy the slice. We, uh, my third and final attempt at lunch at Pizza Bruno. I'm done after this. I will never, <laughs> don't ask. I will never do it again. So we decided that we're going to do like this hoagie and pizza by the slice whole pie program for, we were like, all right, let's see if it works on Thursdays and Fridays. And I thought we could get some traction. Yeah. Our, our location is super weird for lunch. It's just never worked. It's on an island. There's no synergy with anything else. And we're literally in between two high traffic uh, business areas that are pretty busy during lunch, like literally not even a quarter mile down the road. There's yeah. places that are busy for lunch and same thing in the opposite way, busy plaza and everything like that. We're just on this Island. So we did pizza by the slice and we did hoagies and the pizza by the slice. We did cheese, pepperoni. We did a tomato pie and a white pie. That was it. And that was all we were doing. Like, we won't change it. It was great. I was like, this is beautiful. And they were really, really, really good. And, you know, people liked it. I think there was some asks for some toppings. So I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do cheese and pepperoni. That's it. Like, this is what you're getting, you know? And I was like, man, this is what I wanted to open yes, a long time right? ago. Well, yeah, a couple years ago, I had this idea for a slice shop on that. Oh, we talked about here. that, yeah. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to do. Like, I just want to be like, here's pizza one, pizza two, three, four, and then maybe have a fifth that's like a rotational special pie. You know, and that's yeah. it. And that's it. That's all we're doing. Sorry, guys. And yeah, you know. that's my dream pizzeria. You just named it right there. Like, I want to be so good that I can say no. Yeah. And, I, and I'm not doing that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, oh, man, dream, right? I don't know if you could ever get pull that off. But if anybody's out there that can pull that off or is pulling that off, let me know. I want to I want to duplicate it in other places. I think they do it at like the 99 cent slice places. Right? <laughs> yeah. But those, no. <laughs> that's <laughs> shitty though, isn't it? Yeah. It's so shitty. But <laughs> so like, yeah, no, we want to do like the three fifty to $4 a slice, yeah. cheese slice. That's like, Oh shit. This is so good. Like, like lying I'll out the do door. It. Cause the pizza is so good. Dude, I'll do it. If so, all right. If anybody listens to this podcast wants to give me the money to do it in Orlando, anybody in Orlando, Hey, this is my pitch. Let's this crowd. I'm gonna crowdsource that because I want to do in Orlando too. Yeah, this is what we're gonna do. This is it. Yeah. We need a small space. It's gonna kill it, and this yeah. is all we're gonna sell. Done. Imagine that. That's like the dream. That's my. I, I get asked all the time. Hey, if you could open a pizzeria, what would you do? Especially lately, that's my dream pizzeria. Well, if you recall, um, you remember Pizza Badia when he had? Did you ever yeah. go to his? I small... never went, but I know him. Oh, yeah. Okay, so. The small space that he originally had in Philly, which was like 300 square feet, that was it. I mean, it was literally yeah. 
I think it was like four or five pizzas and that was it. Like you could it's add 40 a day, right? Yeah. And that was it. I, I got to go one time in a long time ago to a shop before he did his second one, right before he closed everything like that. And it was cool. The experience was great. I think we were the second group of people in line. We ordered three pizzas and I think within 10 minutes he was done for the night. That was it. That was <laughs> it. Amazing. That was it. Like, the line went through and you know we sat there we got our pizzas pretty quickly we hung out and within 15 minutes 10 15 minutes he was done they're like okay see you at 10 o'clock tonight and that so was it is po- so it is possible then it is possible and i mean he got a lot of uh, clout and a lot of recognition for that and, i mean the pizzas were good they were good I, i'm not gonna... were they great you they weren't to, like i don't think he listens to the podcast so I, I, think think, I think they were the environment and the experience even though i waited outside in five degree weather for an hour and a half <laughs> was super fun. It was yeah. super fun. The pizzas were pretty good. Were they the best cheese pizza I ever had? No, I don't think so. But it was really good, you know? And the experience was fun. And I was just like, fuck, this is like a dream right here. I know, now. right? Let's do uh, it. Uh, Br- Bruno, I want to find some investors. We're going to do this in our life. Low and low cost to get yeah. in the door. You just need an oven and a counter. No, no space for tables. Uh, you know who kind of started like this that I know of? Anthony from Auto Pizza started not – yeah, kind of like this. Like he had a couple different pizzas mm-hmm. in his first shop. So he has like 13 or 14 locations here in the New England area now. Oh, but wow. his first shop was only I remember talking to him, but it was like 250 or 300 square feet. Wow. And he just had awesome. room for one oven, a counter, and he just sold like a couple pizzas on the slice thing. That's it. Oh, so great. That's, and that's how so... we started. Well, the the beauty of it, the simplicity is attractive, right? Yeah. Low inventory low amount of choices you have to make as far as a owner and a guest really and you know if you just hone that and make you know make it the best it can be i mean you look at the guys like okay so i'll just throw it out like the japanese guys that do ramen and they just do like the one thing yeah and they're super great at it and they it's all they do they won't do anything else they do that one style like i love that like a uh, great like that sounds so rewarding to hone that but also in my uh, perspective where i have a machine that just is so many people and i want to add more to it right with another location there's just so many things that i have to think about and right. deal with on a regular basis. like this is broken this person didn't show up uh you know you name it right you name it it's always something going on so something like that just seems like i guess uh, more manageable and just kind of like okay only so yeah. much can happen in this little situation. Worst case scenario, nobody shows up. I can handle it. Yeah, and we're just hanging out, listening to tunes, and you know, whatever. Yeah. Make <laughs> pizza. Cool. You're good to go. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's that's the dream, though. Oh, uh, use social media now to get the word out, like you're doing. Are you starting TikTok? I think we talked about that before. Are you getting on TikTok? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, actually, yeah, I was telling you before we started that I sent out the login to um, so my my marketing manager, my wife Leela, and uh, we have a couple employees that are management management, but they're a bit younger. I think they're both 21 ish. So they're like, oh, yeah, we we don't. It's funny. They're like, well, we don't really do Instagram well, but we know TikTok like that. They really understood that. And I'm getting understanding of it more just based on doing reels through Instagram. Because yes, reels are hot right now. So crazy hot. So we've I've embraced it reluctantly because I'm a big fan of like, you know, a picture is really great and it's simple and you don't have to plan it. I think, I think the planning that goes into doing reels and the TikToks is a bit, um, uh, not, I'm not saying detrimental, but it's a little bit of a deterrent. I think if you're used to Instagram, it's in the moment. It's just like, yeah. okay, that's great lighting. It's a good, pe- it, it looks great. Boom. Take a picture done. The simplicity and the instantaneous, like graphic, excuse me, gratification or execution is really great. Now the reels require a, a lot more, but I, you know, you see what the algorithm is now. Everything's yeah. real. Everything's TikTok, and it's yeah. all videos. And they, I think they just said like, "Hey, we're just going to a video." Yeah, the CEO company. of Instagram just said we're moving from photo sharing app to a video community based app. Yeah. So well, here's hey, a tip. I'm going to give you a quick tip right here. Ready? Quick tip. If you're in the moment, right? So I know reels are hot, and everybody wants to create reels, but they're difficult. Not difficult, mm-hmm. but they're more time consuming sure. than a regular photo. Take your photo, right? There's an app called InShot. Are you an iPhone user? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So there's an app on your iPhone. It's called InShot. I N Shot. Okay. Take your photo and upload it to InShot. Do a video and make it a one second video. One second. 
no second more video. So is that is that like a boomerang situation? That you no, it's just a one second. Go to my Instagram. If you go to my Instagram, Smart Pizza Marketing, the last like six posts I've done have been these one second videos. And what happened? Here's what happens. Uh, Instagram wants video and the most important factor for video for it to get pushed out to the algorithm is watch time, not likes, not shares, but watch time. God, if it. you do a one second video, your watch time is like a hundred percent for everybody who sees oh. that. So it's like a hack right now. Like if you're listening to this six months right, from I'm, when this comes out, literally out, in it shot. may not work. I'm literally downloading it. Like go to my Instagram. You'll see my videos. Yeah. In shot. Uh, uh, you'll see the, like the last six or seven posts I've done of just testing okay. it out and it's get like, you know, anywhere from a thousand to five thousand views on a video. Okay, and uh, cool. that's all organic, no po no promotion at all whatsoever. And like, you see the following count go up, so it's like a, it's like a quick hack right now. All right, cool. Well, I downloaded it, so I'll be utilizing that. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, the the default is a five second video. Make sure you shrink it down to one. Okay, five don't work, but that's a quick hack. But yeah, TikTok right now hot. I I think TikTok is not going anywhere. Uh, you see the age range skewing a lot older too. Like you see a lot of people, like if you sit in an airport and you look at what people are looking at on their phone, I bet you the vast majority of people are on TikTok. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's like a pet peeve of mine. It's like, you know, you got people in the airport, they're just watching videos at full volume with no headphones. <laughs> yeah. Put your damn AirPods in, will you? Yeah. I was just like, okay, cool. I guess videos are in because everybody's watching them at full volume next to me, which is, really annoying but well that's what know, tiktok does it. annoyingly is it auto has the volume on like if you open if you oh watch your God. reel it's off you gotta turn it on tiktok because my wife will be sitting on the couch and we'll be watching tv and all of a sudden this loud ass music comes uh -huh. on out of nowhere uh-huh yeah well i guess that's you know it's the natural evolution of things i mean personally it's like facebook is just such a dead zone yeah you know i i there's no use for it really i think it has our information on it but you know any sort of promo or anything like that it's just we don't even regard it as useful. Um, Instagram, obviously, we, we noticed, like you were saying, the the real stuff. We switched yeah. over to doing a couple of them. We go from, you know, a couple hundred likes to a few thousand views. Yes. You know, when we did a reel. I think we did one with Garlic Knot. Like a, the one I did, you know, on site, we did a, a Garlic Knot video uh, the, other, the other week. And we finally posted it. I'll tell you what, like our views are right now. It's like probably crazy. Yeah, I see it. Like our views are crazy. So, uh, what's our insights here? Probably a lot. But anyways, it, it's just crazy. It's How the only place right now where you can get organic reach without paying money to more people than follow you. Yeah, like way, way more. And I like put on Twitter today because I I do use Twitter a little bit for connecting and networking. But I said the three for the next three months. And I'll report back. The next three months, the three platforms I'm focusing on, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. And okay. all for that reason, because it's video-based, and all three of those platforms are the only three platforms, if you think about it, that give you reach beyond your follower count. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we even talked about doing a YouTube channel as well. I have one, but I've never really used it. So I want to start doing demos. Yeah. Like uh, mainly just like either cooking demos of our stuff or just, Hey, you know, just silly things because, you know, people are watching, like you said, you do your, you do the same events that you do out like the demos just for video that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah live, yeah. You know? And yeah. then that's like, or you do a pizza making class and like, don't yeah. dumb it down every, like you can repeat the same process over and over and over again on YouTube. I think that would be great for you. Cause then you could sell merch, you could sell consulting, you could sell products, you could sell, you know, like, look at The Rock. Like, The Rock is obviously famous, but yeah. he, what does he do? He leveraged his fame sure. into uh, tequila, into an energy drink, into the XFL, into a product line of clothing, into shoes. Like, he just leveraged that because people knew who he was. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, that's that's the thing, right? It's like, how do you leverage your, you know, success in certain arenas to others? And that's kind of what I'm seeing now. I have to leverage that more and yeah. I haven't, I haven't really before because I don't think I, I really felt the need or had the time. Yeah. And that's where it's kind of like, okay, cool. You know, now we're seeing what people are like, people are interested, you know, not only that, but like 2020 taught us that, right? Like 2020 taught us that at any moment your business could shut down. What else are you going to do? Yeah. 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 I think I was watching the, um, 
the David Chang episode of the the next thing you eat or something on Hulu, and he was talking about that yeah, one. I saw that too. Uh, yeah, the restaurant trees. Like I'm doing everything outside of the restaurant because of the pandemic. Like, hey, you don't know, and you know doors yeah. could close, but you know if you have other things, that's great because I think you really need that in order to stay, uh, you know, well, solvent for one, but also less pressure, right? Less pressure that the business is always going to be profitable and making money because, you know, there's times where, I mean, it's really not. Yeah. You know, there you the go. Pizza the Bruno world. energy drink, pizza, Bruno tequila. Pizza <laughs> yeah. Bruno yeah. Wine. There you go. Yeah. All of it. Well, I mean, so you're, this is what, what I'm wearing right now. It's a local clothing company in Orlando and I'm trying to do some merch collaborations with yeah. them. I love their clothes. I wear them all the time. It's a company called Duvin. It's all, it's like a surf, a kind of surf clothing company but yeah. we're talking about doing a lot you know merch collab with them a few other people just because it's more brand recognition it's more ways to get out there and i i love i have a problem with clothing so <laughs> you know I, I i may have may purchase too many shirts or, or shoes so you know if vans is listening if vans wants to do a pizza bruno collab shoe Let's do it. <laughs> don't they have? Don't they have a pizza shoe? They, they do. I've yeah, they, they have work. prints. They have prints. But you know, they collab with you know other. They do collections and stuff. But make like, a cool version of it. Yeah, those ones yeah. aren't that cool. Yeah, I mean, we have great art. So you know, hey, yeah. just throwing yeah. it out there. Just, but you know, that's the thing, right? Like, you know, getting yourself out there, and yep. you know, it's 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 tricky, and it's probably uncomfortable for some people too to understand that. You know, definitely got to get out of your comfort zone. It's hard for people for sure. Yeah, we're we're doing candles. Next, that's our next thing. Like that smell like pizza? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, like trying anyways. So uh, there's a company locally, Wash & Wick. They've done candles for uh, a local cookie slash baking, uh, I guess you could say com yeah, company called Gideon's. Who yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know Gideon's. Yeah, yep. so they're they're in East End, but they actually opened a shop at Disney Springs. Yeah, I saw uh, that about one. A, Yeah, so the, he partnered with Disney, which is oh, like wow. amazing, right? Like dreamboat right so well disney had i don't know not not disney but there's another candle company that has like candles that smell like disney attractions and stuff oh yeah 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 so he does a limited release of candles that smell like his cookies like a picket so he had um so christmas i'll take uh give you an example of his christmas cookies which i love is uh santa's white christmas which is coconut and coffee and it's white chocolate it's like my favorite cookie but they only yeah. do it in december so they had a candle and it was awesome and then he did a Krampus one, which was like a peppermint cookie. And then he did a peppermint Krampus candle. And it was awesome. They smelled wow. great. And I bought them. And they were like 30 bucks. You know, my <laughs> wife's my wife's obsessed with them. So I'm at Gideon's like way more than I should be. But, <laughs> you know, it got us thinking. I was like, well, heck, we could do a, you know, a margarita pizza. Yeah. Uh, the, the cannoli was a, a no-brainer for us because it's like cinnamon and chocolate and lemon and nutmeg and stuff like that. So. We're hopefully releasing those this next two months. So we're going to start with two. I believe the first one will be we'll do cannoli and our K bar pizza, which is fennel, rosemary. Um, it has a lot of fontina on the pizza. So it's fontina mozzarella. So it gets this like kind of buttery smell. So yeah. it's got like kind of these buttery notes and they That's smell cool. great. And we have label, custom labels for them and stuff. So it's just, you know, more stuff that I think, I mean, I'm buying candles that smell like cookies. I think someone will buy a candle that smells like a pizza. Oh yeah, for sure. Things. There's so, definitely people out there that would that would do that. I would. I'd buy. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and you know, that's just more kind of interesting ways to market um, what we do with whether it's food or the brand. I would mark. I would buy those pizza candles just to trick my kids into think I'm making pizza, and they come <laughs> downstairs and like yeah. hey, pizza. I, I think like it's it's you know it's tricky because the company I work with they're like well savory is is one it's a more difficult um concept to do because they don't really do a savory like the the oils and sensei it's it's oh, really right. kind of tricky so there's certain scents that they they use like a, a like a bread a bread kind of smell that that worked out pretty well and just this like is a bacon second. i'm sure is probably one that's popular yeah they have they have like a bacon so uh but they have you know they, they're like sweet stuff all day you know floral and you know, stuff like that. Herbaceous stuff too was kind of tricky. So we did two runs of the candles and uh, we were 
pretty close and i think we're going to release next year with or next month with them we that's should. cool let me know when they come out I'll, I'll share it on my end too yeah i'll take pictures and tag you and stuff like that so cool. I'm, I'm excited i think they're going to be great i liked them the k bar one was like the first one was really good the second round i was like oh that was so good because it has a very particular fennel smell too with the sausage that we do yeah. and so they added a licorice kind of tone to it and it was really good I was you know like, what you gotta oh, do is you gotta put like a qr code on the candle itself to your menu so it says hey when you like this oh when you're hungry, man go right to our menu and order that Shit, right i already pr i already printed the label so maybe i'll put a sticker on the back with the yeah. qr that's a good idea that's yeah. it there you go more marketing right yeah there you go more marketing you light the candle order the pizza or yeah you get the smell going yeah. you get hungry order right from yeah. our yeah yeah, yeah 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 so it, awesome. it, it'll be cool i'm excited for those awesome brutal well i've had you on the line for 45 minutes i think i said a half an hour in the beginning so where can people go say hello or follow you or visit you in person if they're in the orlando area <laughs> so instagram is uh at official underscore pizza underscore bruno so official pizza bruno it'll come up and our web page is pizzabrunofl.com and you can come find us at pizza bruno on curry ford at 3990 curry ford road orlando just google us in orlando you'll find us we have a large amount of google reviews we have a bar stool review if you want to check that out too got a got a seven five apparently that was pretty good for neapolitan um, he don't like neapolitan pizza so yeah 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 i wasn't there i didn't make it and we had a that's good that's better than right in the oven yeah i was like hey we had trainees work in the oven and stuff yeah. so Hey, I'll take it, you know, so, I'll link but, all yeah. that up in the show notes to your Instagram, the uh, pizza Bruno's Instagram, your website. And, um, if you're in the Orlando area, I, I tell everybody, so I got a lot of people who go to Orlando. I'm like, they're like, where should we go for pizza in Orlando? And I'm like, Br pizza Bruno. That's the only place I suggest you go. Thanks. Lit. Appreciate yeah. that. And we're so, close to the go, airport too. Yeah. So go check it out. Uh, Bruno, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. It's always fun talking to you, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. You too, man. Don't go anywhere though. All right. Well,